The beautiful coral, an animal that is essential to a healthy reef system. Yes, coral is an animal. An animal that is hard as a rock, yet delicate as a flower. Not too long ago, corals in Hawaii and throughout all the tropics, which don't forget, makes up 25% of the Earth's surface, started to die at alarming rates. The prime culprit? Global warming. The death of coral is a slow and agonizing one. Before it turns to ghastly white, where death is near moments away, it turns an almost translucent fuchsia color in a grand celebration of its once magnificent glory. As I explored the reef over these last years, I found that, miraculously, one in about 1,000 corals had lived. I dubbed these corals the reef mothers. It took many years for the reef mothers to spawn, but last year, baby corals started to appear on the reef. These baby corals, however, are in for a long, hard, and perilous journey towards survival. This is their story, and this is Think Ocean. Aloha, my name is Captain John, and this is Think Ocean. And I'd like to welcome you to the state of the state of coral, Hawaii. Just in case you didn't know where Hawaii was. And yes, Hawaii has more coral than any other state, including Florida. So how is the state of coral in the state of coral? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I wrestled with that question, how to put it in words here in the intro. I, I didn't know exactly what to say. And it just by chance the other day I was snorkeling along and I saw this scene and I had my camera and I filmed it. And I think this scene can best explain the state of coral here in Hawaii better than I could put it into words. Let's roll the clip and check it out. Well, it's struggling, to say the least, but it hasn't met its demise just yet. While snorkel swimming along the coastlines, I've been monitoring and surveying certain coral heads on three different reef systems over the last five years. And I've found that the coral is literally trying as hard as it can to not only survive, but to repopulate the reef system and make the reef great again. Join me as we discover the state of the state of coral, Hawaii. It was five years ago at this very dive site, dive site Hilo Romeo, that I really became interested in coral. This dive site offers some of the best diving in all of Hawaii. I dive here for eagle rays and manta rays. We got green sea turtles, we call them honu in Hawaii. There's sandbar sharks. There's awesome tiger sharks here. And oh yeah, we got dolphins. But I never dove here before to look at coral. Five years ago, the water temperature was 84 degrees Fahrenheit at 100 feet. And on the surface, it was pushing 90 degrees. And all of a sudden, one day, the coral looked like this. It was bleached white coral heads everywhere. All over the place, you could see white, bleached coral heads. 
And as the month went on and the water stayed hot, more and more coral heads bleached and died. The dead coral heads got covered with algae, and now they look like this. It was at this time that I became particularly interested in corals, and I started to observe all the corals out on the reef. I found that the encrusting corals and the mounding and the plate corals seemed to do just fine, except for a few spots uh, there was some bleaching, but more than 99% of it was a uh, really good shape. The types of corals that I'm talking about in this video are the Posilipora corals, the Grandis, the Elkhorn corals, and the Meandrina corals, the ones that look like cauliflower, they're called cauliflower corals. And here's some examples of living and dead Posilipora species. So there wasn't much I could do in regards to seeing coral, except watch it die and get covered in algae. Until boom, 2018 comes rolling along and little baby coral started to appear on the reef. As the year went by and summer came along, they were everywhere. I mean, everywhere I looked there was little baby corals, it was absolutely amazing. And so that's what got me really excited. I had seen the corals die, and then I seen the babies, the new ones, show up a few years later. You know, they came full circle right before my very eyes here in Hawaii. And so I started looking for little baby ones, and I became keenly focused on the reef. And voila, I found the few survivors on the reef. And believe me, in a very large area where there's thousands of dead coral heads, all of a sudden I found one. And I dubbed those the Reef Mothers. They must have spawned and given birth to all these little baby corals that we find now on the reef. So I started logging the positions of the Reef Mothers. And I went back every now and then and I started monitoring them. And believe it or not, they're just fine and they're healthy and they're actually growing. The babies, uh, where there was clusters of small corals, I took note of those positions. And I go back and I check those corals often. Uh, I couldn't do that to all the babies. They're, there's literally now thousands of them out there. And so, yes, the few surviving corals, the reef mothers, are just amazing pieces of coral. Where they're at, all around them is dead coral. And there's one beautiful coral head. It's just amazing. They're healthy, they're growing, and they're doing just fine. My question is, how the f*** did they do that? Okay, so here's an example of a bay. This is dive site Kilo Papa. In this whole bay, there's four mothers. That's it. Thousands and thousands of dead coral head out there. There's a mother over there to the south. There's two out there in the middle. And there's one over here on the north end of the bay.
Aloha everyone and I hope you're enjoying the state of the state of coral video so far. At this time I thought it would be a good idea to explain to everyone how coral lives and unfortunately how coral dies. Coral begins its life as a gamete where it floats around in the water until it finds a suitable substrate which is a bottom of the ocean for it to land on and make a home. The way it makes a home is by forming calcium carbonate. It forms layers and layers of calcium carbonate until the structure gets bigger. And in some cases, like the corals that we're specifically talking about in this video, some of them branch off. Okay, let's take a closer look at the coral and zoom in on the box here. We can see that the calcium carbonate structure is full of small pinhole pores. In each pore lives a coral polyp, and at the head of each polyp, the coral can extend out tentacles with stinging cells on them that the coral uses to capture its microscopic prey as it goes drifting by. This is how coral eats. However, coral has a very voracious appetite and it needs to consume more food than it can capture. Coral, after all, is an animal. It is a cnidarian, but it needs more food then it can capture on its own. Okay, so the coral's trick is to invite in algae. And it's a special kind of algae. It's called zooxanthellae. And it's photoplankton. It's a plant. And it photosynthesizes from the sun. The organic matter produced by the photosynthesis is a sugary-like substance that the coral consumes. And here, the coral is full of color, made possible by the color of the algae that the coral invited in. So it's eating microscopic matter, small shrimps and crabs, basically, that are drifting by. It's eating the organic matter that is provided by the algae, the zooxanthellae, from it photosynthesizing from the sun. And that's why it's so important for corals to have sunlight. It's not for the coral animal so much itself, it's so that the algae can photosynthesize and its organic byproduct matter can be consumed by the coral. Okay, so coral bleaching is caused like this. The sun gets hot, the water gets hot, and then the algae, the zooxanthellae's byproduct, becomes some sort of irritant to the coral, and the coral expels it out of its pores. Even though it needs its food source to live, the coral now begins to whiten, which is its natural color. It's made of calcium carbonate. Remember, the color of coral comes from the zooxanthellae algae that photosynthesized by the sun that the coral is now booting out. And so with all the zooxanthellae algae gone, the corals booted it all out, it turns back to its natural calcium carbonate skeleton color, which is white. And the coral at this point is still alive. It's an animal. It's stinging like tentacles or up in the air. It's catching microscopic prey and it's eating. However, it can't eat enough, and it soon withers away and slowly dies of starvation. Okay, so all the baby corals have appeared on the reef. Let's hope the reef gets healthy again. When I'm talking about coral, and I'm talking about it here in Hawaii, I'm talking about Kona Coast on the big island of Hawaii. There's more coral in Kona than there is in the rest of the state of Hawaii. 
The main reason for that is Kona doesn't have river runoff. The rest of the state, there's rivers pumping sediment into the water. The sediment blocks the sunlight and it plugs up the coral holes that the polyps live in. It's like a whole bunch of sand being piled on your house and it sucks. The sediment that comes from the hillside is a result of 150 years of sugar cane dominating these islands. This is also the big island of Hawaii. And here the lava flows into the sea. When the lava flows into the sea, coral will attach to the lava and make a coral reef. Some of these flows are very young, only 50 or 60 years old, and some of these coral reefs are only 30 or 40 years old. We have some of the youngest coral reefs in all of the Pacific here on the big island of Hawaii. See you guys back at the Think Ocean headquarters. <laughs> Woo! Aloha, everybody. Let me change, and I'll be right back. Wow, that was a lot of fun. But let's get back into the state of the state of coral. It was summer, June of 2019. And the baby corals had been on the reef now for a year. They were strong, they were healthy, and it looked like they were going to repopulate the reef and fill it with beautiful coral heads once again. So we took a class put on by the Marine Science Center for local citizens to educate us about corals specifically on the reef. We learned that color was the best way to tell if coral is healthy, and they issued us coral color templates to put beside coral while we're underwater to compare them to the coral and see if they're healthy. They also told us that global warming and the ocean waters getting warmer is the major cause of corals bleaching and dying and that 30 degrees Celsius is the maximum threshold for coral survival. They also said that in September and October of 2019 the water would get that warm and they were expecting to have a major bleaching event here in Hawaii. Well, we set about monitoring coral for color and checking for early signs of bleaching. The 10 babies and the reef mothers were checked weekly over the three sites that we started to monitor all the summer of 2019. And then September 2019 came along and they were right. The water did get very warm. This is a shot of my dive computer at depth. You can see here circled the temperature of the water, one degree below the threshold of the coral bleaching and dying. In September, baby coral started to bleach. In October, the waters got hotter and hotter and more and more and more corals started to bleach. Even some of the bigger corals, the mothers, started to show signs of bleaching. All the baby corals were bleached white until the bottom of the reef looked like it had little white puffy cotton balls all over it. I thought, oh my god, is Hawaii going to look like this forever? Now all the baby one-year-old corals are bleaching and it looks like they're going to die and be gone? Are the other corals going to be next? Is the coral reef going to become a toxic algae reef? Now remember, white is not dead. It's still alive. It's just very malnutritioned, and it is on the verge of starving to death. I thought, this water needs to cool, and it needs to cool fast. Now, Hawaii is known for its big waves in the winter that come out of the northwest. 
It was the end of October, and I hoped and I prayed for a really big early season northwest swell to come in, churn up the waters, and cool them down. Well, it came, and in part two of the state of the state of coral, we're going to follow along on their epic journey of survival. Also in part two of the state of the state of coral, I'm going to show you my three site monitoring and surveying program. And with the help of some of the local kids here in the neighborhood, we built a coral garden. So this has been part one of the state of the state of coral where I took you from 2015 to 2019. And in part two, I'm going to bring you through the rest of the journey up to date here in December of 2020. Thank you so much for watching the state of the state of coral in Hawaii. Part two is going to be coming out real soon. Until then, please keep the oceans healthy. Please keep the oceans clean, keep yourselves healthy, and have fun in the water, and stay safe in the water. Until next time, I'm Captain John. Aloha.